Hi guys, it's Snowy and Zeta. Uh, so today um, I'm doing another adoption perspective video and I thought I would do um, like an old school throw it back to kindergarten kind of show and tell, um, if you will. So I have this box beside me and I this is kind of my adoption, my Korean identity, um, that I've always kind of built and carried with me um, through the years. So this is kind of like my adoption in a box, if you will. So um, I thought I would just go through this and show you kind of what I have kept and held on to um, and collected and stuff through the years. So um, let's go ahead and dive in. Um, so on the top, I have this, a little doll, look. How much bigger than Zeta, or about the same size as Zeta. So this doll, I don't know the origins of this, but this is a doll that is in, dressed in hanbok, um, which is the traditional Korean style. Um, this is actually a doll that I used to have, and she sat on a shelf um, as a kid. I was always told, like, I can't really play with her. She's just more for looks. Um, so, yeah, so there's that. Um, I have a, another doll, and she is also in Hanbok, and this one, um, was given to me by a, um, co-worker of my dad's who went to Korea on business and brought me back a doll. So this, you can see, she's a little more tattered, um, a little more worse for the wear, because this is a doll I actually got to play with as a kid, um. So yeah, so I had two dolls. Uh, so growing up as an Asian adoptee, um, not everything that I gathered was necessarily Korean, but I kind of held on to, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, kind of held on to things that just were Asian um, in an essence. So I also have this little doll. Um, I think she's more in like Chinese dress. Um, but she used to also sit on the shelf um, with the other girl in red. What do you think? No? Not digging her? So I've held on to her. Um, my dad also, it's funny because a lot of this stuff is not Korean, but this is kind of what I held on to when I was a kid. My dad also worked for um, a Japanese company that made like the dr brake drums and parts for Toyota cars. So um, we got a lot of uh, interaction with Japanese people and Japanese culture and stuff. We also hosted Japanese ex exchange students when I was younger, and I can talk about that um, some other time. But So I have like the little rice paper balls um, that blow up, like the little balloons. Um, I have like scarves and handkerchiefs, or I guess you could hang this as art. Um, there's another one, um, oh, this is really pretty. I had a, I had a hope someday I'll have a room that I'll be able to decorate with some of, like, my Asian stuff. Um, and there's this one. Again, these are more Japanese than Korean. Uh, all right, so the rest of the stuff, let's start digging in, um, is mostly my Korean stuff. Oh, here's some more artwork, but again, these are more Japanese style. I used to have all of these hanging up in my room. So, yes. Uh, all right, so these, when I first came off the airplane, I was wearing these shorts, all the elastic has like come out of it, and I was wearing this little shirt with it, it's like terry cloth kind of material, and this little tank top underneath. So this is the outfit that I came to the US in and I wore on the airplane. And I had one shoe on, and I was holding the other shoe. <laughs> so 
So this was my outfit. This was my coming to America outfit right here. So of course I've always held on to that. I actually, bless you, I actually, I don't know if I can find the picture, but I dressed Zoe up in this outfit around uh, the age that I was when I came to the U.S. just so I could kind of get uh, a feel for like, oh, this is like how big I was. But um, so yeah, so this has always been very special to me um, because this was... These are the clothes that I had on my back when I came to the U.S. and I didn't really have much else. Um, so, yeah. And then they also sent me with... Okay, we might have to take a break. What? You turn around. They also sent me with these shoes. Now, these, I was not wearing these, but these are like the rubber shoes. The sad part is, is that through the years, I have not had the best. Um, they really weren't protected from elements, so they've cracked and everything, but I still have them. So these are like traditional Korean shoes. Um, again, I wasn't wearing these, but they did send me with these as like a keepsake, I guess. Um, so, yeah. Uh, then through the years, um, let's see, I have, oh, this is an envelope that I kept. This was my, this is my case number for the adoption. Um, so for Holt, uh, Children's Services, I was K83999, which was my, my number. Um, didn't go by a name, I went by a number. And... Yeah, so what else? This was a booklet that was given to my parents um, when they adopted me. So this is a glimpse of Korea provided by Intercountry Adoption Program. But again, okay, so as a kid, when I was looking through this stuff, look at the images that you see on this. Um, I'm going to do another video on what I thought Korea was when I was younger versus what I now have a better idea of what Korea is now. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to, to kind of show that. So this gives, um, talks about the land and the people, history, religion, names, education, clothing, holidays, mass communications, games, housing, family structure, marriage, adoption, language, social life in general, and basic phrases for parents and children and food. Um, so this just kind of goes through like Korean history, I guess. Um, and I'm trying to see, oh, actually, you know what? There's recipes in here. That's pretty cool. Um, I cannot see the published date, um, but it does say 12-80, so maybe this was printed in 1980, in December of 1980, but yeah, so that's uh, the educational materials that were sent. Um, I also have this, and I don't know when this was sent, but this is sent to, I believe, our, uh, our caseworker. Um, so this is Korean culture. A little magazine um, and this talks about Korean art sports and games of Korea goes over different paintings um, talks about the Olympics in Korea so I had this I had like some of this imagery to look at when I was growing up so Korean culture and this is September of 1984, which is when this was printed. And then I have a map of Seoul, Korea. Or not a map. Um, it talks about the Olympics. So, host city of 1988 Summer Olympics and 1986 Asian Games. So, again, this is all the imagery. So a little like trifold or whatever. Um, so those are some of the cultural pieces that I had growing up with. Now this is from the U.S. Department of Justice Immigration and Naturalization Service. 
So these are actually photocopies of my certificate of citizenship. So this is not the actual document. This is just a copy. I have the photo. I have the actual document um, in a fire safe box. Um, so this is to prove that I am a citizen. Um, basically, I was an alien up until um, that point. So this happened. Um, this is for me for March 23rd, um, 1982, which is when my birthday was. Um, my country of birth is Korea. My complexion is medium. My color, and, my color and eyes are brown. My color of hair is black. I was three feet tall and 35 pounds and obviously single. <laughs> And this was in November 16th of 1987. So November 1987, I was five years old. So at five years old, I was three feet tall and 35 pounds, which Zara is bigger than that now. Um, Zoe is definitely taller than that. Zoe is like 3'8". Um, and Zara, I think, is like 3'3". Three, three, and Zara is 3 years old. <laughs> so I was, a, I, was a, I was a small little thing. Um, but yeah, so this happened... Um, yeah. The one memory I have of when this happened is that I got to see the circus train that day. Um, so, like, I knew it was a big... I knew that what was happening was a big thing. But I didn't really quite know what it was about. Um, but I do remember that when we went downtown Indianapolis, like I saw the circus train and I got to see the animals and stuff <laughs> um, on the way to the courthouse. So, you know, priorities, I guess, right? So, yeah, so I keep those in here. Um, let's see what else. These are fingerprints of my parents. So Federal Bureau of Investigation, United States Department of Justice, an applicant. Um, I'm not sure what these were for, but these are my mom's fingerprints and these are my dad's fingerprints. So they had to go through that process. Um, this is a financial statement of my parents, of uh, what they had to go through, like what their um, equity looked like, their assets, their liabilities, all of that for filing the paperwork for the adoption. I won't read through all of that stuff, but um, then this is, wow, this is like one of those old mimeograph, you know, where the ink was purple, like you can barely, barely see that there's stuff written on it now because it's aged so much. So this is FIAA in Hours Newsletter, which was like a, a parenting group. Um, and so this was just a newsletter from them. So some of this stuff happened before I came. Um, let's see. Send the following. So this is just uh, the things that they had to send. So you are responsible for the following. As soon as possible, send the following to so-and-so, Bethany. Statement of adoption, affidavit of support, and a check. Um, additional airfare may be requested later. As soon as possible, send the remaining papers for immigration, certified copies of birth certificates, certified copy of marriage certificates, financial statement, letter from employer, letters from bank, credit union, affidavit of support, copy of latest 1040 income tax return, letter requesting that cable be sent to the foreign country, and a check uh, for $10 made out to Immigration and Naturalization Services. Um, patience is required. Arrival from Korea is approximately two to three months later. This depends on various things such as fingerprint approval, how long it takes to get legal docs, how long the court takes, etc. So this is basically the final checklist of everything that my parents had to submit and all the information that they had to provide. Um, this is a petition to classify an orphan as an immediate relative from the U.S. Department of Justice. So this is, um, my parents had to submit all this paperwork so that I could be legal right away. Um, which I am thankful that they did this because like in the first video uh, that I did about Adam Crasper, his parents had not done that. Um, so this is asking for uh, requesting the, upon the approval of the visa petition for me. Um, 
and this is attention orphans section which that stuff always I don't know it's just it's bizarre um, you know that we were orphans um, so yeah that's more immigration and naturalization this is a statement of adoption um, to the applicant um, Hey. So this says my my dad. Uh, it is my desire. What? Hang on. Okay. Um, so this is a statement of adoption. Um, that this is for my dad. Uh, it's my desire and intention to legally adopt under the laws of the Republic of Korea the following person residing at Holt Children's Services, Jung Oak, which was my Korean name. Um, country of birth, Korea, status, orphan, and relation to adopter, none. Um, yeah, so Jung Oak. So this was looking for uh, filling out paperwork to have my passport issued. Um, let's see what else is here. Um, affidavit of support. There's more fingerprints. So the affidavit of support for the American Embassy, this is basically all of the information that they had to list, like where my dad worked, who else was in the family, their ages, um, yeah, all of that. And again, I was coming into a family that was already established, um, so I came into a family with four biological children to my parents, um, so yeah. Uh, this, oh, this was an ID card uh, made out to Jung Oak, care of my dad's name. Um, these were newsletters from like the little parenting group in Michigan, I think. Um, yeah, this was my file folder. K83999 Jung Oak uh, 32382. I don't know what the KF means, maybe Korea female. Um, but yeah, this was who I was, or who I am. Um, this is also a chest x-ray from when I was in Korea. They were concerned because you can see here that there is like what looked like a shadow on my lung. Um, apparently when I was in Korea, and I have in some of the other files, I, um, had poorer health, and I actually had worms. <laughs> Um, and I was treated for that. So, um, the other things, let's see, before I get into all the other documents, um, this was another book that my parents got, um, the Guide for Adoptive Children and Parents, or Parents and Children, um, and this is from Holt Children's Services. This got chewed up by my cat when I was growing up, so that's why it looks like that. Um, but it, you know, talks about, um, there's the, the flag, there's the national anthem, um, there's the alphabet, it's talking about seasons and a brief history, and then there's some songs. Um, so, and just some pictures and talking about like what to expect um, behavioral wise and all of that. So yeah, there was another little resource book. This was given to me um, by my godmother um, and for Christmas of 1984 and they had said, this is where you were born, we hope you will enjoy this book when you get older. This book is well loved. You can see like the binding, um, I used to pore over this book all the time and look at it and so like it's been taped <laughs> but yeah so this was cool because this allowed me chances to see uh, where I was from so and I think that was their intent so there's some pictures it's basically just a picture book um, and scenes from Seoul but when I was little I used to, you'll see, so there's people here, these are more like traditional things and festivals and stuff, um, and 
doing traditional dances and playing music. But like, there's people here, and I used to imagine, um, like, what if maybe, oh, this picture here I used to look at a lot, and I'm like, what if that was me? Um, it's really cool because they wore babies back then, and like here it's like a trend that has happened in, I don't know, I feel like the last 10 years or so is wearing babies, um, but they did it back then, so, but I used to think like, could that be my mom? Like I used to think any Asian person I thought like, well, maybe that's my mom or maybe they know my mom or does that look like me? Um, kind of thing. So yeah, that's what I, that's what I used this book for when I was growing up. I also got this book. I remember from the public library in Indianapolis. Of course, this was printed in 1973. But sometimes a library does like the free get book giveaways and this was in that. So um, it allowed me to get a little bit more history of Korea. Um, but it like talks about Korea after the war and that kind of thing. So um, gave me a little bit more perspective. Okay, so getting into the juicier bits of my files. Um, I do have my passport, um, that's also in my safe, safe box, um, maybe I'll get that out. Uh, so this is all my, like, my doctor's paperwork, um, from Holt Children's Services. These are mostly written in Korean, um, but these are about, like, um, hematology, uh, parasitology, urinalysis, um, parasitology, I did have... I tested positive for E. coli and something else. And this was in March of 83, and then I came over here in July of 83. Um, and then a follow-up, did not find it, so I was treated for it, and I was okay. Um, but then in June, I tested positive for it again. Later in June, it was not there. In July, I tested positive for it. <laughs> I don't know. Um, early July, I tested positive. And then July 11th, it was not found. And July 13th, it was not found. So I had apparently um, lots of issues with E-HIS, which I don't know what that abbreviation is for, and E. coli. So um, had some tummy troubles there. These are also uh, my other health records. Um, so this talks about my immunizations. Um, and, yes, hang on. Okay. Um, so yeah, these are all my medical records from when I was at Holt. So it talks about um, the health issues that I had. Um, and all of like the doctor's notes and stuff, which is kind of cool. Um, some of it's really hard to read. Um, I had a cough. I, um, yeah. So on March 11th, I was placed in foster home. Um, then I had a physical exam on the 14th that deemed me adoptable. Um, I had a checkup on the 7th of April. On April 13th, I was released to Michigan. On May 4th, I was assigned to Michigan. May 8th, I had a checkup. June 7th, I had a checkup. July 6th, I had a checkup. And July 16th was my flight to Michigan. Um, so this is my pre-flight child report. It's like this is written on rice paper. It's super thin. Um, flight date, July 16th, 1983. Date of report, July 15th, 1983. Um, my eating habits. Takes one bowl of rice mixed with soup three times per day. Any side of dishes. Likes to eat potato and egg. Takes some milk, bread, fruits, and cookie for snacks. Be fond of sweets. I still am. Goes to bed at 11 p.m. and gets up at 6 a.m. soundly. Frets a bit after wake up from sleep. Takes a nap for half an hour, one to two times a day. Sleeps when the light is turned off. Has normal stool once a day. Signals by making a grimace face when she's ready for toileting. Says, uh, um, uh, says, 
uh, ama, uh, which is mama, appa, which is papa, ya, etc. Understands adult simple words, walks alone and runs well, goes up and down stairs holding other things, and goes on simple errands. Is not shy with strangers, likes to take a bath, likes outside play, has good relationship with peers, likes to play with doll, and is mild. Um, so, and then the escort's comments, it took her a while to warm up to us, she slept a great deal, what a sweetie. So this was all my information uh, that was written about me before I came on the airplane. Um, then my physical appearance, um, all of this kind of stuff, my initial examination, um, I had blue spots, which are what we now know as Mongolian spots, which are what the girls have. Typically you see it in Asian babies or darker skin babies. Um, it's just like a bluing of the skin, like on the, on, sometimes on the back and mostly on the butt, the buns. <laughs> So I had those. I had a flat spot on my head, which I still have. Um, yeah, I was saying uh, mama, oma, but I was deemed adoptable. Um, yeah, so this is just about all of my health stuff. So I sat alone and I could stand with support. My head was normal. My neck was normal. My chest was symmetric. Um, it says I was a, an abandonee. Girls. Hang on. Okay. Sorry for all the interruptions, but, uh, if you watch my channel regularly, you know that, uh, it happens. So, yeah, these are all my medical reports, which I think is pretty cool to see. Um, then some of the other things I have, this is a receipt. Um, of money that my parents paid, which, you know, my, again, my view of adoption is, you know, people always say, like, you can't put a price on a human or you can't put a price on life, but then I'm like, a price has already been put on my life. Um, so however you want to take that, I'm okay with it. That's my experience. And, but I'm like, I have receipts. I have trans, I, I was a transaction. Um, so they offered a price and somebody was willing to pay for it. And um, so I have some of the receipts from the, uh, the expenses. Um, this was a resource book from the Michigan Department of Social Services, Families for Children, to Parents from Parents, a guidebook for the family on adopting a foreign born child. Um, so again, this was more just what to expect. Uh, from other parents who have been there. Then these are letters. Um, this is confirming that you've completed their, uh, that my parents completed their home study. Um, as a result of their discussions, your completed home study indicates the following regarding a prospective child for you, an infant girl as young as possible and normal healthy. Um, so there's that, what they were, what they were requesting. Um, this is we have received your contract and closed. Please find new formal application and medicals. Please send them to Margaret Spaley. Um, if you've received this already, please disregard that. Margaret was my caseworker. Um, we've received your preliminary application. Um, please find the contract and um, again, asking for more money. Uh, let's see, that's just an empty envelope. This is a memo. Jean has agreed to take your case. I will be transferring it to her next Thursday. Uh, she will contact you to arrange to do your update. I noticed that you have not yet returned the formal application. Four-sided form, the notes for references. Um, also, if you don't have physical forms for everyone, you'll be needing those and also um, the office can mail you those. So just some uh, information kind of stuff. Let's see, this is Missionaries of Charity, um, inter-country adoption agencies and fee estimates. So this is all like information that they had when they were gathering of who, uh, what agency they should use and where they should go. Um, we went through Bethany, uh, which uh, then worked with Holt. So this is 
notice of approval of relative immigrant visa petition. So, um, your petition to classify the beneficiary as an immediate relative of a U.S. citizen has been forwarded to the U.S. Consulate at Seoul, Korea. Um, approval notice of this position of this petition was wired to Seoul, Korea. So they were going about everything um, legally to get me uh, the status and everything that I needed. Let's see, these are also a list regarding medical screening. You may want to share it with your pediatrician for your child's first visit. Received your bank statement today and mailed off your materials to INS. Let's hope you hear soon. Um, Yeah, that's just saying more paperwork that they need to file. Here's another receipt. Um, I don't think I, I don't think I'll share how much they paid, but um, yeah, this was a uh, oh I had amoebic dysentery apparently, um, and that was notice that they were given, and that was July 5th, and then I came over on July 16th. So I was still dealing with issues at that point. Um, let's see, this is uh, some other paperwork. Let's see. Um, families for children. Um, just some newsletter kind of information. So I've held on to all of this because this is this is the paper trail that I have um, for my life. Um, this is to verify that the above named child is being adopted by Mr. and Mrs. My parents, um, as the adoptive parents, they have all rights, privileges, and responsibilities for Jung Oak. Uh, Oak Jung was placed with the family on 7-16-83 as ordered by the Honorable Judge Donald Rink, Judge of Probate Juvenile Division. Family will have all legal documents essential to this adoption as soon as they are processed by the court. Um, so yeah, this was basically stating the official um, info. Um, let's see, this is uh, another receipt for more money paid. <laughs> There's a lot of those. That's an empty envelope. This is, oh, okay. So this will be another video. Um, that will be another video. Um, yes. So some of this is for another video that I'm saving to do later. Um, more about like my birth search and uh, that kind of thing. So, oh, and then I also pulled out, um, I was given a birth certificate for the state of Michigan. So they basically recreated one with my name, um, my date of birth. So this um, has nothing to do with Jung Oak, but has everything to do with um, who I was. And this was issued on June 25th of 84 the state of Michigan and this is the actual my certificate of naturalization and so this is I'll show you just the picture that was me um, that day that I was naturalized I had such a huge head like a little bowl head um, so yeah that's uh, I was five years old in that picture three feet tall and 35 pounds <laughs> so yeah um, and then I have many many other things but that's basically essentially what I have in my box um, that I keep of like my adoption things and things that I kind of held on to that were important to me when I was growing up so I have many more videos to do um, delving deeper into some of these documents um, but that's a whole nother video and this has already been long enough so Hopefully you found this um, interesting. Uh, I got to share a little bit more um, of me and um, kind of what I've held on to through the years and what's been important to me. But if you have any questions, um, you hopefully you, you know if you watch my other videos, I'm more than open to answering questions. Um, there's nothing in, in the adoption process that I'm not willing to talk about. Um, 
So please feel free to ask questions, um, comment if you have anything else to share. Um, share my video if you know of people that were adopted. Um, I, I think it's also nice to be able to connect and link up with other people. Um, and until next time, and we'll take a deeper dive. Um, I'll see you guys later. Bye.